We were number one seed again. Kenny Williams is back over there. I told him somewhere down the line we're related. I have a picture on my desk when we lost, when we ran into the really hot Auburn team that I took Kenny out and I knew the game was over and I kissed him on the top of the head. And it's one of my favorite pictures, but we were pretty good. And, uh, Kenny and Luke, Cam and Kobe Garrison, that was so much fun. But the last two years have been really hard. 2020, we had so many injuries. Yes. That was, uh, this year, before we get to the tournament, I, at the ACC tournament, I saw that the box score from we played Virginia Tech at Virginia Tech during that season. We only played seven guys. We didn't have Brandon Robinson, didn't have Cole Anthony, and uh, we lost in double overtime. The injuries really did hurt, but I, I felt that I made mistakes. We were up three against Clemson. And I didn't remind the guys to foul. They make a three and send it to overtime and we lost. Up three against Duke and we did foul. And young man from Duke did one of the greatest things I've ever seen, bouncing that ball off the front of the rim and making that basket. But that time I fouled and it didn't work out either. And we lost in overtime. Wanda's maiden name is Jones, and I told the Jones youngster, Trey and Tyus both were great players at Duke, but I'd never seen anything like that. We had six games last year that were decided on last-second shots. We, all, we lost all six of those. My first year as Coach Smith's assistant, we had five games where the other team had the last shot that would have won the game. And they missed all five. That was the difference between me and Coach Smith. We talk, I talked to him about that several years later. Needless to say, I didn't talk to him after last season, even though I talked to him every night. But uh, no one could emphasize rebounding any more than Roy Williams. And we didn't get a box out. And we lost the Notre Dame game on the second shot. Didn't get a box out twice and lost the Duke game. So when those six games were decided on last second shots and we lost all of those, it uh, sort of ate at me all summer. And we beat Syracuse on the road late in the ACC and the next week lost to them in the ACC tournament. And they just had more fire and more passion and I didn't get my kids to that level. It's funny and humorous and comical, but so many times over my career, I've had fans say, Coach, if you could just beat Duke twice, we don't care about anything else. I don't know if they're going to say that right now because we did beat Duke twice, but uh, we still didn't get done what I wanted to do. I just never got the team this year where I wanted them to go. I just didn't get it done. I didn't get them to buy in and focus on the things that I think are really bitter big in the game of basketball. We got better all season long. I think we got better, but not to the level some of our teams have been. I didn't push the right buttons. We did some good things. We did some things that sometimes, as I said, the locker room at Duke, the Duke game here, Louisville here, Florida State here, Notre Dame in the tournament. I just didn't get it done consistently enough. So, yes, I'm getting old. Body's breaking down mentally and physically. But I do love teasing my players and said, I just wonder what you're going to look like when you're 70. Yes, I want to see my children and grandchildren more. I want to give Wanda more time. I still don't know about getting in an RV and driving across the United States of America, though. I'm all in for going to baseball parks with the grandkids. But the biggest reason 
we're having this meeting is I just don't feel that I'm the right man any longer. I love coaching, working with kids on the court, the locker room, the trips, the jump around music, the trying to build a team. I will always love that. And I'm scared to death of the next phase, but I no longer feel that I'm the right man. What I'd like to do is bore you to death for a couple more seconds and thank some people. Uh, Buddy Baldwin was my high school coach. He's the person that made me want to be a coach. My experience with him was really the most important thing as a youngster. I never would have gone to college if it hadn't been for Coach Baldwin. And I love the fact that he was a UNC graduate and he wanted me to come here. The players, players from Kansas, players from North Carolina, players from one high school, I've heard from all of them today. One of the first ones I got was a young man who's a minister who was a football player at Owen High School, my first year as a high school coach. Telling my team that, talking to them this morning is the most difficult thing I've done. I've been so lucky because of those guys. I've been so lucky. 15 years at Kansas, those kids gave me a chance. They said, let's do what he says and see if it'll work out. They didn't question me. We grew up together, and I appreciated how hard they worked and the passion with which they played. Jerry Green told me that time, he said, you're getting those kids to pull the nails out of the floor for you. And I always remembered that, and I felt like that that's part of the problem that I failed in the last two years. Now, 18 years at UNC, and you're darn right. I'm as happy as I can be about those individual banners up there of the players that I coached, including Tyler Hansborough on the front row. That's pretty impressive. All those guys that uh, helped us put those three banners behind us. I'm so proud that I can say in the 18 years we've been back, we're the only school to win three. You know, I never had a player that wanted to miss a shot. I never had a player that wanted to make a bad play. I always pushed them to concentrate, hustle, and get better every day. And my players these last two years, they did, they're not any different. They didn't want to miss a shot. They didn't want to miss a box out. I didn't get the message to them well enough. Some of you people have been around here a long time and you see that play hard, play smart, play together. Some of the older guys that played here when I was assistant, that's the last thing I yelled in the locker room when they leave the locker room every night. We'd get together and clap our hands together and they would leave and yell, play hard, play smart. Bill Guthridge was always teasing me. He said, how do you want them to play? And I said it every game for the last eight years I was assistant here. Coach Smith, being Coach Smith, would say, eh, I think it should be play hard, play smartly. I told him I was going to stick with the play hard. My second and third year at Kansas, second or third year, Coach Smith called me and said, we've added one thing to your play hard, play smart, and we've added play together. And that was one of the most proud moments I've ever had. Again, I've been so lucky because of those players. And nothing is better than seeing the look on your guys' faces when they accomplish something that was really hard. I love those locker room celebrations. And yes, a lot of people realize that I couldn't dance worth a darn but I didn't care. I just wanted to jump around and act like a fool. So to the players that are here, the ones that have already sent messages, that have already called me, and the ones that haven't, I loved every one of you, and thank you. Bob Frederick, Brad's father, took a chance and hired me at Kansas. 
and Chancellor Gene Budig allowed him to do it. Bob Frederick was the finest gentleman I've ever known in my life. And I was really happy that he was able to see two of our national championships at North Carolina before he passed. Dickie Bedour is one of the most impressive people I've ever known. When I said no in 2000, he caught a lot of junk. He was criticized a great deal and people blamed him. And three years later, he called again and asked if I would come back again. And all of us know that a lot of people wouldn't have done that. Chancellor Meeser allowed him to do that. And I appreciate Dickie and Chancellor Meeser more than they will ever know. And Bubba now and Chancellor Guskowitz are two people that uh, have been hard to talk to them over the last seven or eight, nine days. But I love Chancellor Guskowitz started here as a freaking trainer. <laughs> And he's in the same ballpark as I am about how much he loves this university. And I appreciate that about him. I appreciate the fact that he asked me on Sunday if I'd take 24 more hours to think about it. And Bubba, we've grown together and trust him a great deal. I'm putting a lot of load on he and the chancellor's shoulders because I'm giving my opinion very strongly about what I want to happen with the program. But Bubba and the Chancellor, I thank you guys. And thanks to my coaches, my first staff at KU, wow. Jerry Green, Steve Robinson, Kevin Stallings, Mark Turgeon. That was my staff. All four of those guys were coach of the year in their respective leagues and some of it multiple times. And then I had Matt Darty. And then Joe Holiday. And Joe Holiday stayed with me for 20 years. And that was still the North Carolina lineage because Joe was Steve Hale's high school coach and he worked at our basketball camp here. And I just loved who Joe Holiday was. Thanks, partner. Ben Miller, Neil Darty, Jared Hass, C.B. McGrath, Hubert Davis, Brad Frederick, Sean May. Kendall Marshall, Eric Coops. No one has had the, that quality and level of help and care and love that you guys have given me. After I hired Jared and CB, I made a decision I would never hire anybody as an assistant coach unless they had played for me. That's how strong Jared and CB were. <coughs> When I think of Eric Coots, I think of somebody can do everything. And when I think of Eric Coots and Hubert Davis together, I think they're the only two people that can love this university as much as I do. And Steve Robinson, 26 years as a security blanket and as a brother. And words cannot say what I feel about Steve. Administrative assistants, because that's what they tell me to call them as opposed to secretary. Some of them tell me much more strongly than others. At Kansas, Suzanne, Debbie, and Joni. And here at North Carolina, Jen Holbrook and the current staff, Nadia, Cynthia, Kay, and Maggie. Cynthia didn't come in today, but I think they got her the information. But they took care of Roy Williams, but they also took care of Carolina basketball. I don't know what to call these other people except to say thank you. Steve Kirshner, Clint Gwaltney, Doug Halverson, Jonas Serration. Those four guys are absolutely incredible and work so hard to take care of many things, especially me. There's no way we would have had the success that we've had without those guys. I'd like to thank the other coaches here at North Carolina. I love coaches. You realize that in North Carolina, we have nine coaches, have had nine coaches who have won national championships. I love that. I do I love coaches. Some people portray coaches in a manner I never see. We all got into coaching because we loved our game, wanted to teach and wanted to help young men develop or young women develop, not for the money, 
We did it because someone helped us and we wanted to help others. I came back to North Carolina for $2,700 a year and I sold calendars and drove copies of Dick Crump's football show and Coach Smith's basketball show. And a lot of the coaches around the country do it, did it the same way. So many, I can't say them all, but I truly admire and respect and lucky to call them friends. Tubby Smith, Lon Kruger, Tom Izzo, Mark Few, Yes, Bob Huggins, I always say that he's a little unusual, but I love him to death. Jared Hass, Mark Turgeon. In our own league, Mike Krzyzewski and Jimmy Bayheim already in the Hall of Fame, and they made me work as hard as I could every day. And Leonard Hamilton, who needs to be in our Hall of Fame. Younger guys like Josh Pastner, Chris Mack, and Tony Bennett. Oh, my gosh, what a coach Tony Bennett is. I've been lucky because... Those guys push me. I've also been lucky because old guys like Nolan Richardson and Bob Knight helped me immensely when I was a young coach. And some we've lost, like Coach John Chaney, who would always hug me. And Coach John Thompson, who was one of my mentors. And yes, Dean Smith, Bill Guthridge, and Eddie Folkler, who taught me everything I Everything I know. Coach Smith, I've always said, was the best there ever was on the court and was even better off it. I could never come close to matching what Coach Smith did. But every day I tried to make him proud. Bill Guthridge was my freshman coach. I wasn't very good, but I loved to practice, loved to play. And Eddie Fogler took me under his arm when I was a part-time assistant and taught me everything that I could possibly need about recruiting. Those guys were really something, and every day, I hope all three of them felt like I was doing what they wanted me to do. I'd like to thank the former players, a different group, Bob McAdoo, Jeff Lebo, Kenny Smith, Don Johnston, and Greg Campbell, because they wanted me to coach their sons. That really says to me what they thought. The good news I have for you is that, believe it or not, I'm just about done. I never had any day that I didn't give my absolute best, not one single day. I cared deeply for my school. I cared deeply for every player. And I'm really proud of what we accomplished. If I can get through this period here, I'm going to try to put aside the fact that I no longer feel like I'm the right person and try to concentrate on the fact that uh, I'm really proud of what we accomplished. The last long period of time, I've been focused on the fact that I just didn't think I was good enough anymore. But if I can get through today, I'm going to focus on that we had some fun. My family allowed me to coach and believed it was the best thing for me to do. They encouraged, supported me, cheered and cried. They cared about what I was doing passionately. Wanda, Scott, Kimberly, Katie, Kurt, Aiden, Court, Kaysen, and little Miss Kenzie. I love you. Wanda is the best partner I could have ever had for 48 years. Most of the time I kid around and say that I've allowed that woman to live with me for 48 years. It'll be 48 years. It's July 28th. She was the best partner I could ever have had. I don't know what the future holds. In some ways, I'm very sad. And as I said, I'm scared. But I'm also really happy and proud. We did OK. I was coaching great youngsters, winning a few games, and loving it with my heart and my soul. 
we did okay. And to borrow from Lou Gehrig, I'm a big time Yankees fan. And it's nice to see Art Chansky back there with how the Red Sox have been struggling. Lou Gehrig said, and I say again, I feel like I'm the luckiest man on this earth. Thank you. Coach, thank you very much. Um, go ahead, uh, Ryan, CL, Brendan to that mic, Luke, Bob, Greg to that mic over there. CL, you'll start it up. Wes, can you raise Coach's mic again, please? I know some of you guys in the back were getting sleepy, but I appreciate you standing up like that. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'll try. And, was I close to 18 minutes? Um, I don't know. You may have to run a 22 or something. <laughs> um, there we'll was a day. We'll get started. CL first. One thing, I'm not big on telling you what you cannot, cannot ask. If you have a question, though, for Bubba about who the next coach is or what the next coaching process, that's what we're going to do at 7 o'clock tonight on the Zoom. So just a matter of saving time, just please refrain and just hold that question until the Zoom is 7. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. CL? All right, Roy. Um, you said, uh, you've said plenty of times that when Coach Smith retired at 66, he regretted taking that step. He thought he still had coaching left in him. Did you revisit that discussion that you guys had? And, and uh, what insight, if any, did, did you take from it in making this decision now? Yes, I thought about that. And I, I told Coach, as I said, that I was going to coach as long as I felt like I was healthy enough to do it. But also, I was really bothered. Uh, by the mistakes I made last year and uh, the fact that I felt like I could have done a better job coaching this team and uh, this year. And as I said, my guys never wanted to make a mistake, so I'm not blaming them. It was me. I didn't get them to do what I wanted them to do. But uh, uh, I did think about that conversation with Coach, and I made it past 66 because he made me promise not to stop at 66. And I'm 70. I'm not going up to the senior tees yet, so I think I'm okay. Uh, but uh, I am very comfortable with the decision. I wish I had had better thought process to make me do it, uh, but I'm very comfortable with the decision. Over here on the right, Coach Greg Barnes. Hey, Roy. Uh, you mentioned being in school, so I want to start there. Um, loyalist Greg, I'm sorry. You cut out. I, you said I mentioned. You mentioned being old school. Oh, yeah, okay. So I wanted to start there. Loyalty has been a defining characteristic of your coaching career. Mm -hmm. There are changes coming to college basketball within the form of the one-time transfer rule and name, image, and likeness that seem to run counter to the concept of, of loyalty. Uh, did that conflict of ideas play any role in your decision? You know, Greg, last uh, summer, I... I I ached quite a bit because of the mistakes that I thought I'd made. And this year, uh, I felt like, again, that uh, uh, I could have done better. And uh, there's no question that I'm old school. And, uh, you know, there's been a couple of things happen, uh, 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 the transfer portal and things like that. But they didn't make the decision. They just confirmed what I – I mean, I love our players. Walker Kessler, I love Walker Kessler. Uh, uh, Sterling, Walker Miller, uh, Garrison. I mean, I can go down. KJ's, KJ's here. Uh, it was strictly what I said. It, nothing else. They may have confirmed my thought, but it wasn't uh, name, image, and likeness. I mean, I tell my players all the time, they've got it made. Sean May, when he was playing here, it was a lot tougher those days, but uh, I can't stand in the front of uh, progress, whether I believe it's progress or not. It doesn't make any difference, but uh, it, uh, those, those things and some things that uh, happened. I mean, I felt like it was uh, 
we played miserably against Wisconsin, but I coached that game. So I coached miserably. Uh, those things just confirmed it, but it wasn't, uh, I'm not running out just cause I don't want to talk about name image or likeness. I don't even understand that what the heck it still means, but it, uh, it, it sort of confirmed it, but it, it was just the fact that, uh, I didn't feel like I was any longer the right person. Before I go to Ryan, those of you sitting, if you have a question, kind of give me a high sign so I can pick three more on this side and that side when we get going. Ryan Wilcox, DTH, go ahead. Coach, you mentioned a number of former uh, coaching colleagues. Um, I was curious what the conversations with those people have been like uh, in the last few days and specifically the last few hours. I haven't spoken with... Uh, those guys, Mark Turgeon, uh, I did speak to Turge. I mean, again, you think about Mark Turgeon, Steve Robinson, Jerry Green, and Kevin Stallings. I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for those guys. So Turge called, and I happened to have the phone with me, and I, I took his call. But, you know, Mike Krzyzewski sent me a, a text uh, of – Kirsch says he has some comments from all the guys and uh, or a lot of guys. And uh, it's just that I love coaches. I mean, I can't imagine. I know that you guys think I'm crazy. I can't think of a better group of guys than those guys I named in hundreds that I didn't name. I mean, Coach Tinkle from Oregon State, they have a great run. And the NCAA tournament and uh, – after we won 900, I got a handwritten note from him. I mean, it's, they really care about kids. I really believe that coaches our age are, and I'm a lot older than some of them, not, not older than Jimmy or Mike, but uh, I think coaches are, they're my heroes. My mother was my hero, uh, but Buddy Baldwin was really, really something for me. Over here, Luke on the right. Wanted to, I had a couple of questions sort of about this, the process, listening to you talk about it. Is this something that you had considered last summer? Because it sounds like, and, and, and let me just tack on a couple of quick ones. Yes. Uh, it's because it's all kind of connected. Last summer, and then was there a precipitating event in the last month or two that brought you to this point? And when you kissed the floor, did you know that we were coming to this day? Okay. Uh Three or four years ago, I, I was worried about some things. Uh, you know, I, I was worried if I was losing my mind, worried I was getting old. Uh, I told, I remember Doug Moe was a great Tar Heel, and Coach Smith loved Doug Moe to death. And I said, Doug, I'm forgetting people's names. And Coach Smith told me one time I was better than anybody would ever known. And I said, have you looked in the mirror? Because he was the best. And Doug, Doug calls me wah. He said, wah? I got six grandchildren. I said, hey, hey, you, come on over here. He said, that's getting old is all that was. But uh, uh, I had talks with Bubba and Kirsch and Clint to make sure that, you know, I wasn't losing it or anything. And I felt like that they helped me get to grips with that. But it was really, uh, you know, Wanda wanted me to quit in 09. And uh, she really wanted me to quit in 17, but I survived 12 more years. So I felt like I did all right. Uh, last summer was really hard, uh, because yes, I can say injuries and all this kind of stuff, but I, I gave you an example of a couple of decisions that we just, we didn't foul. We lost, we did foul. We lost. And, uh, even this year, the first game in, uh, uh not the first game, the championship game in Asheville, uh, against Texas scores tied and there's 20 seconds to play or something like that. And I sent the team out there, and Steve Robinson, I grabbed him and said, if we weren't so young, I would double-team the ball right now, but I'm afraid we'll give him a wide-open layup. And I never had that kind of ideas. And so, you know, Matt Coleman dribbled the clock out and shot it in, and they beat us. And those kind of things really bother me. I, I hold them on for a long, long time. Uh, nobody remembers. Well, a couple of people in here may, may remember when – Dudley Bradley stole the ball from Clyde to Glad Austin, went down and dunked it. They came down and Kenny Matthews had a pretty doggone good luck from three that could have won the game. 
They forget that when we beat Michigan State and Carmichael, Magic was the great player, but Jay Vince was good, and he missed a wide-open 12-footer that could have won the game. Dale Solomon of Virginia Tech missed a free throw with 0-0 zero, zero on the clock. And uh, like I say, that was – Coach Smith was a better coach. And uh, But those things really bothered me last year. And then this year, like I said, I didn't feel like I could – I didn't feel like I was touching the right buttons for my players. And uh, I see Andrew and uh, uh, KJ and Walker and Sterling, and I'm not blaming those guys. I just didn't feel like I didn't feel like I did the job that I wanted to do. And so the last part of the question, I think, Luke, is that all that stuff came to a head after the Wisconsin game. And uh, like I said to Greg, just some other things sort of, sort of confirmed that it was the right thing. But uh, like I said, Wicked Wanda wanted me to stop in 09, so I got 12 more years, so I felt like I did all right. So the – sorry, just when you kissed the floor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, did, did you know at that point or no. did you suspect at that point? No, you know, it's strange because uh, I didn't plan that. Uh, you remember how good our home court was for us this year, except for the Marquette game. <laughs> and I was thinking about, I really appreciate you. Uh, after I left Kansas, I was wishing I'd kissed the floor at, K at KU, Allen Fieldhouse, because the home court advantage was unbelievable. But I was walking off the court and I started to yell to the guys, but I did a poor job of coaching the guys that day. Cause remember I was trying to say thank you to the fans and we did a terrible job of our chorus line thanking and bowing. It was, it was symbolic of the coaching job that I did during the course of the season. I couldn't get them to bow together. But I was just walking off, and it was right here at the center circle, and I just wanted to say thank you. You know, and I'm the guy that when I was at Kansas, I used to go jogging on game day and go pat the tombstone of Dr. Naismith and Doc Allen. And last year – uh, and years past, Clint Gwalton, if I, and I've gone up to Coach Smith's grave site since I've been here. So I'm a little weird. Over on the left, Brendan. Right, uh, congratulations, first off, on the career and the retirement. You mentioned how difficult the conversation was this morning with the guys. I'm just wondering, since this wasn't something that had been you know, predetermined weeks ago, how did how did this decision impact the conversations you've had with him in the last couple of days? And also this morning, can you just give us a little more insight into what that experience was like for you? Well, last week after we lost to uh, Wisconsin, I started having uh, meetings on Saturday night with three guys, I think then, and Sunday night and Monday and Tuesday. And I think I got through all the players' individual conferences and uh, – then our players have basically been here since July the 6th with leaky, what you guys have three days at Christmas and two or three days at another time. And so the classes are virtual. We wanted them to go home and then bring them back. Like we've talked as a staff, like April 12th or something like that, to start individual workouts again. I didn't want them to come back for this. I'm having a hard enough time when I look over there and see those guys. Uh, but I didn't want somebody else to tell them. And so the current team, we did the Zoom. And uh, I asked all the different coaches to call different people. And uh, I see Marvin Williams standing back over there. Never been around a more appreciative young man than Marvin Williams. Didn't even start a game for us. He told me the only thing he wanted to do was win. And fortunately, we won a national championship. And Sean May, who told me that he was coming back, he thought the rest of the guys might be interested in leaving. And I remember we win the national championship because Sean May was the best player in college basketball. And uh, we won it on Monday, came back Tuesday. And on Wednesday, he called and said, you know, Coach, do you think my stock can get any higher? And I told him he wasn't a, uh, a steer or a horse. It's not stock. But I agree with you that I think you're in the best position. And uh, he had my blessings. And uh, it's just hard to look over there. So the uh, telling the current team 
was really hard. Uh, but seeing and talking to Jack Emanuel when he came in to see me today is something that I'll love for the rest of my life and feel very, very fortunate. And uh, just think about how lucky I have been. And it's because of kids like that. Wes Miller uh, came closer to playing his potential than any player I've ever had in my life. Uh, but I'll remember the fun times too. Uh, CB, you look better with the mask on, son. CB was one that came and told me it could be a walk on at Kansas. And he drove from Topeka to Lawrence every night the entire summer to pick up games. It's about 35 minute drive. And Marvin, you can get on CB because he came over every night and he never got picked for a single game the whole summer. <laughs> but it impressed me that he kept coming back. So, it, Brandon, it's a little bit of that. It's just I feel like I've been so fortunate and so lucky. That was a long-winded answer that I don't even know if I answered your freaking question. All right, if you six will sit down and Art, Lauren, and Barry to that side. I'm sorry, Bob, go ahead. And then Andrew, after, after Bob, Andrew, Brett, and keep your next. Keep them quick. Coach, you checked in at 27 minutes, according to ESPN stats. So we'll we'll keep them moving. I'm never really concerned about ESPN stats <laughs> in my entire life anyway. <laughs> I teed that one up for you. Bob. Uh, Roy, with the unconventional nature of this season, was there an inclination to try to give it a, one more go around, especially as a coach who's a creature of habit and want to be able to do things your way? Yes, Bob, and, and uh, but I wasn't going to quit last year after 14 and 19, and I was not happy with what that was, and so that made me come back this year, and uh, I'll say again, I tried to give my team every single day everything I had, but I didn't do a good job with this team, so – I wasn't going to wait for strike three is bottom line, but this was a hard year. It's our players from the room to the gym, the room to the gym, the room to the gym. It was, they don't have, they did not have the experience of going to uh, the football games on Saturday and seeing the pageantry of college football. They didn't have the walking on campus and seeing the uh, uh, classes being taught out on the grass. And so it was hard on our guys, but uh, no, uh, heck, I'd like to coach for 30 more years, but I just don't think I'm the right guy. Art. <clears throat> Rory, you've been such a great ambassador for the game all these years. I know you have a lot of things to think about, but do you see possibility of staying involved with the game in some way? You know, Art, I, I don't know what's in the future. I, I know that I won't coach again. How can I leave Leaky Black and go coach somebody else? That's not going to happen. Uh, if I could be useful in some way to the University of North Carolina, I would, I would try to do that, see what it sounds like. But uh, – Still not convinced about driving an RV across the United States, but uh, I need to give Wicked Wanda and my family some time. But uh, I'd love to be an ambassador for the game and an ambassador for coaches because I just think the coaches are my heroes. Around the right, Andrew Jones. Is that close, Art? Sorry, Coach. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Andrew. When you were – Going through the last couple of weeks and weighing where your mind was, maybe on your walks or something like that, it, was there a moment when you knew this is it and you got to tell Wanda and kind of had to come to terms with it maybe before you did tell her? Is there that one seminal moment where you just thought this is it? I was so discouraged after the uh, Wisconsin game, the way I'd gotten our guys ready to play and uh, – I think I sort of knew after that game. And so the last 13 nights, I basically stayed awake all night to make sure. 
uh, there wasn't much sleeping or anything, but uh, I don't know that there was a single event. Like I said, you know, some things sort of confirmed uh, that it was the right decision. I called Bubba, I think, uh, was it Tuesday of last week? So we lose on uh, Friday night, and I call Bubba on Tuesday of that week. And uh, uh, Chancellor was nice enough to meet with me on Sunday and asked me if I would uh, think about it for another 24 hours. So I, I did what he asked. I stayed late awake all night. <laughs> and uh, the last two days, I was a lucky guy. I went to Augusta National, played uh, par three. Uh, Tuesday and then played 18 Tuesday afternoon, played 18 yesterday morning and it was beautiful and I loved it and uh, shot 88, 87. Uh, I did par 13, 14, 15, 17 and 18 to finish. So I probably won't ever go back, but uh, between every shot, I wasn't really thinking about hitting the golf ball. I was thinking about uh, how I was going to tell my players in uh, getting through this press conference. So I knew then that, you know, if you can't even think about golf when you're at Augusta National, the decision that I felt about not being the right person any longer, that was, that was pretty much confirmed everything. On the left, Lauren. Coach, congrats on a great career. Thank you. You mentioned – so many of those late game decisions and almost moments. So how will you reconcile with those memories and find joy in them if possible? You know, Lauren, I, I won't find joy in those because those were bad moments. I'll try to forget those as quickly as I can. But like I say, I felt like uh, if I could get past this of not feeling like I was the right person any longer, uh, I'm going to enjoy thinking about uh, the great wins and the great seasons. And as I said, uh, I said to Coach Robinson this morning, same thing I said to you, I said, uh, we did okay. And uh, he said we did a lot better than that. And uh, I think it was Marvin said the same thing in with the players in the lounge. Uh, uh, I'm going to look and be proud of those, uh, you know, the old game cock, the old ball coach is the one that sort of got me into calling myself old Roy and uh, old Roy is going to feel pretty good uh, about what we accomplished. And old Roy is going to be proud, but the problem is old Roy selfish. He wanted more. And I didn't think I could, uh, uh, cheat my school and my kids. We got about three or four more questions. Brett? Roy, as, as much as you love this place and this program, how difficult in 2000 was it to tell Mr. Bedour that you weren't going to come? And then a few years later, when he asked you again, what changed to make you decide to come that time? It was, it was hard. Uh, it was hard to tell Coach Smith and Dickie that, but I had promised Nick Collison that I would be there his entire career. And I never could come to grips with the fact that I would leave without doing what I told that kid. And uh, Coach Robinson and I went to Oklahoma City a few years ago and saw Nick Collison's, one of his last games. They retired his jersey for the S Seattle Supersonics, Oklahoma City Thunder. He averaged like five points a game for his career. But I'd promised that kid that I was going to be there for his, his entire career because some people had told him that if uh, he came to Kansas that I would be gone, that I was going to go to North Carolina. So that's what it was. It wasn't that Dickie made any mistakes or anything. It's, I just I know it's corny as all get out, but that's what it was. And so during that time period, uh, the, those three years between 2000 and 2003, uh, I never told any other kid that. Nick Collison was a senior. I told uh, – Everybody that asked that I'd turned down several NBA jobs and I'd turned down North Carolina and that was the only school that I would ever leave Kansas for. And so I, that was the freedom 
And then we had changed athletic directors at Kansas and Dr. Bob Frederick, who was so loyal to me. And uh, uh, so the job had changed a little bit. And, and I was, it was a, a different decision. You know, uh, Wanda and the kids thought I would come back the first time and I didn't. And they thought I would stay the second time. And I came back, but it was uh, Dick Bedore. And Coach Smith said, uh, he said, we uh, wanted you the first time but we need you now. And uh, I think I would have been able to say no to Coach Smith if it hadn't been that Nick Collison had already graduated. <laughs> so that's it. All right, time for two more. Coach, appropriately, the two oldest guys probably in the room, Kip that's and Barry. Right. Kipper. Roy, uh, uh, indulge me a personal note here. I want to thank you for befriending me professionally and personally, over these decades, Thanks, it means Kip. a lot. Thank you, Kip. Uh, my family sends its regards. Uh, but I speak for a lot of media, I'm sure, when I say, Dad Gummit Roy, we're going to miss you. <laughs> you <And know. laughs> is there a favorite memory you'll take with us, with you, about just what you've done for the last five decades? Uh, you know, Kip, uh, I said this when Kansas, when they, uh, there was an article in one of the athletic, is that what it was? Kirsch? Yes, sir. And it talked about how I was sick as a dog when I first got to Kansas, but, uh, I met with the local media and I told them that I would try to help them do their job as long as they didn't try to bother me doing mine. And that's something I've always felt. And, and I felt that way with you many years ago. Barry, many years ago, uh, you guys are good. Uh, we don't have to agree uh, to respect each other. And I know I'm not an original person saying that, but uh, I did, you know, over in my later years, our press conferences got so, <laughs> they got so ridiculous. I mean, they lost, we were off chart, uh, you know, they, they sort of got out of hand, but it was fun and we laughed a lot, but, uh, I loved coaching my high school team. I loved coaching at Kansas. I remember we were picked eighth in the big eight and, uh, we won the preseason NIT. That was my second year. And they introduced me as Ron Williams instead of Roy. And uh, I told my team that was all right. It didn't bother me because we were going to shock everybody. And we'd shocked uh, LSU with Shaq and Chris Jackson and Stanley Roberts. I told Dick, but how he came by shoot around. And he said, boy, they've given you a tough road, LSU at LSU. And I called my team over and told them, I said, what did I tell you guys? Because I told them we were going to win. You know, and you do stupid stuff like that when you're younger and, uh, uh, but, uh, Nick Collison, Drew Gooden and Kirk Heinrich saved me because college basketball got very difficult with, uh, the recruiting stuff there for a while. And there were three great kids, great families that just cared about college educations. And so they saved me. I went home and told Wanda one time, maybe I will have to go to the NBA, but those three kids saved me. But, uh, big moments, you know, I've been so fortunate, but I will tell you. It was a thrill for me when Coach Smith and Michael Jordan came in our locker room in St. Louis. And I told them that North Carolina basketball had been Phil Ford and uh, Dean Smith and Michael Jordan. But for the rest of history, North Carolina basketball was also going to be Sean May and Raymond Felton and Marvin Williams and uh, to have Michael and coach Smith in the locker room and then to go over on the side of the court and have Wanda and Scott and Kimmy to be able to hug them. And, uh, everybody had a little tear in their eyes. So, and, you know, we've been fortunate to win it again in 09 and win it again in 17 and, uh, uh, Phil Knight left me a message today. And I'll never forget, we beat Oregon, his school, in the semifinals. And uh, I came out of the press conference, and he was standing there waiting for me. He said, you know, you beat my school. 
but I'm so, so happy for you. And you think about those kind of things. I think about the relationships and uh, uh, Shaman Williams never played for me, but he's here today. And uh, Tyler Zeller, I mean, I'm afraid I'm going to miss somebody's name, but uh, so the relationships, you know, uh, David Noel, Byron Sanders, um, Nick Bradford, Rex Walters, all those guys today. It's, it's about the kids. Uh, Buddy Baldwin took an interest in me, and I've been trying to repay him for 48 years. Coach, last one. Barry? I've been talking a lot about your feelings, and one feeling that you mentioned and kind of passed over that we don't like to talk about in public very much you said, I'm scared to death of the next phase. What are you scared of? The only thing I've ever wanted to do was coach. I'm 70 years old and I'm arranging our golf trip to Arizona at the end of April. I've been putting teams together my whole life. When I was 17 years old, I'm calling my buddies up on Saturday morning and telling them what time the pickup games and where it's going to be. When I'm a high school coach, I'm calling and waking guys up and telling them our tea time is at eight o'clock. So uh, it's all I've ever done. And uh, I don't know if, I don't know how good I was at uh, coaching, but I'm scared to death of trying to do something that uh, is not coaching. Uh, but uh, when I hug Aiden and Court and Kaysen and little Miss Kenzie, the world seems at peace. And so I am scared. You know, I don't, Wanda may decide she wants a job after a couple of weeks. And uh, God knows the other night she came back in. I said, there's something wrong with the dishwasher. And it was on rinse. Hell, I didn't know that. I just knew it wasn't washing the dishes. So she gets a job and I have to do all that crap. I know I'm in trouble. So this is like all of my press conferences over the last couple of years, guys. They've deteriorated a great deal. I'm talking about running the damn dishwasher. So uh, uh, let me close this thing by saying again, I've been so, so lucky. I appreciate you guys and girls. I'm from the South. So if you say guys, that means male and female all. I'm appreciative of Chancellor Beauty and Bob Frederick, Dickie Bedour and Chancellor Meeser, Bubba and Chancellor Guskowitz. And for the rest of my life, I'll always say that I was a coach. And that's the proudest moment of my life. Thank you. Everybody, thank you very much. Chancellor, Bubba, thank you. Especially Coach Williams, thank you for everything. If you don't have the Zoom tonight at 7, let me know. I'll get that to you. We appreciate y'all being here.